Hello and welcome back everyone. I am back with another video to discuss the book that I mentioned yesterday um, by Peter Redgrove, The Black Goddess in the Unseen Real. It was a specific part that I felt like was important and needed to be um, discussed. So I'm going to go ahead and read that chapter. I will admit it is a pretty lengthy chapter. I won't promise that I'll read all the way through it, but I at least want to get through the point um, that I was trying to make yesterday about um, people with certain mental health conditions such as schizophrenia or even bipolar. But I won't get into the bipolar part of it right now. It's just the... Um, the um the schizophrenic part of it a lot of people don't know before i decided to go to nursing school i actually wanted to become a psychiatrist and um, get into mental health so that i could help with some of the mental health conditions that they say are incurable or that they have no known um, cause for so i just felt like this was something that it would be very very beneficial um, to share with people so I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully it pops up but I'm gonna go ahead and try to share it now let's see here okay so hopefully you all can see this again this is the black goddess in the unseen real and it is also I found another copy online same book It's called the black goddess in the sixth sense but anyways it deals with our unconscious senses and their uncommon sense and again this is by Peter Redgrove Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to the part that I wanted to share with you all. Okay, let's see here. Give me one second here. Okay, I'm also going to turn this fan off because I don't want it to be any, any background noise. It's already enough background noise outside, so... Hopefully it doesn't start to rain while I'm doing this. But anyway, so let's get started. So this is part two, section two of the book, if I'm not mistaken. Extra Sensuous Perception, The Osmotic Fountain. Okay, so here we go. I am well aware with all this talk of invisible radiations beamed at us from each other and from cosmic sources. I am myself... Let me make sure. Okay. I am myself displaying the classical schizophrenic fantasy. Yet the magic stuff is there, as we already have seen and shall increasingly understand. There is another possibility then that the people we dub schizophrenic, like the shamans, sorcerers, poets, and witches who can see the wind, are actually sensing further beyond the Oedipal consensus than those who are agreed to be sane. What place is there in a society for people with visions, who see visions? If they are lucky enough to encounter a belief structure who assures them that what they envision is real or useful and they find it is so and can handle it, then they become witches, shamans, or poets. But if they encounter a psychiatric doctor who cannot understand these matters except in terms of mad or sane and can see no way of adjusting them to society then the person is surprised by the extension of his senses then the person who is surprised by the extension of his senses will be treated as mad and will accordingly withdraw into isolation of true madness Felix Solman, for instance speaks of weather changes that affect 30 percent of the population in an overt reaction and the rest of humanity in an occult response using the word in its medical sense of hidden occult means hidden in effect this means that 30 percent of people are weather sensitive frequently to the point of it being a medical or psychiatric problem due to the different patterns or stress hormone secretion are more apt to be weather sensitive or susceptible than our men let me read that part over again in effect, this means that 30% of the people who are weather sensitive frequently to the point of it's being a medical or psychiatric problem and the rest are not consciously susceptible. Women apparently, due to a different pattern of stress hormones, secre secretion are more apt to be weather sensitive or susceptible than are men and so are children. 
Soman says, of the person susceptible to weather electricity, they have a sixth sense that makes them suffer and therefore deserve our help. We shall return to consider weather in detail. Harry Weiner takes this sense, ex just give me one second, let me. too hot in here. There is absolutely no way I can sit in here with all this heat. Okay, where was I? Okay, Harry Weiner takes this sense extension view of schizophrenia in four remarkable, in four remarkable papers published in the 1960s. The extra sense he considered operative is, however, smell. It appears that the schizophrenic, like the artist, is first of all full of the discovery of an ability which seems to add new vistas of knowledge and feeling tone to the world. If he is then diagnosed as mad, he may enter the tragic second phase of withdrawal, which is accompanied by disturbances of metabolism and other physical changes. There are about half a million schizophrenic in an active phase of the condition in Britain. The cause is still mysterious to orthodox medicine. A popular view is that it is caused by the disorder, the disordered internal secretions of metabolic chemicals, hallucinogens. This is a strange basis of the facts, which in Weiner's opinion show that external chemical communication is involved. R.D. Lang is famous for his interpretation of schizophrenic, of the schizophrenic situation in which the body language, the look and feeling of the people surrounding the schizophrenic contradict what they say with their mouths. The mad person can see the living lie of which the sane family is unconscious. The schizophrenic is susceptible to a greater extent than is convenient to the human weather which surrounds him. So I'm gonna read that part again because I think this is very important. This is what I was talking about when I said that um, as a kid, when I went into church, I felt something was off. And I felt the same way when I um, began to work in the healthcare field. Something just wasn't right to me. And I guess this is what R.D. Lang, was, this is what he's talking, his interpretation is what I felt. This is how I felt about the world. And that's why I said this is a very powerful book because it is exposing some very deep truths. But anyways, R.D. Lane is famous for his interpretation of schizophrenic, of the schizophrenic situation in which the body language, the look and the feel, feeling of the people surrounding the schizophrenic contradict what they say with their mouths. The mad person can see the living lie of which the sane family is unconscious. The schizophrenic is susceptible to a greater extent than is convenient to the human weather which surrounds him. We have seen, however, that there is more to body language than visual gesture. Weiner's suggestion, Weiner's suggestion is that the schizophrenic regresses to a more primitive mode of perception through, a, through the subliminal senses, as though Freudian, Freudian, Oedipal, man, Freudian Oedipal man were getting on all fours again. He makes a very good case with compelling documentation for the schizophrenic's ability to respond to smell as a dimension of body language. His contentions have been around very, very much strengthened. His contentions have very much been strengthened by later work on chemical messengers up to the present day. The feats of people who have en enhanced olfactory ability challenge the extrasensuous abilities of blind people. Weiner, Weiner quotes many cases in, old, in the old literature. A.A. A. Brill treated a patient who claimed to be able to tell people apart by their smells and to know when his cousin was blocks away by this means. This looks like a delusion when, he could, when we consider the famous modern dirty t-shirt experiments in which males and females can detect each other's gender and mothers can recognize each of their children by the smells of their t-shirts. Raw, Raw found when he had been working with Saturnid moths, which like fibrous insect, use a moth's odor as a sexual attractant, that he and members of the family eventually learned to distinguish the previously imperceptible specific moth smell and discovered that it formed streaks in small rivers in atmosphere. In the atmosphere, his wife once located a stream of odor about 15 feet wide. Raw himself knew a man whose feats 
a perception by smell would rank him with the insects apparently the wilds of montana where wood was used for fuel this man could smell coal smoke from a train 14 miles away the psychoanalytic literature multiplies instances as weiner shows freud's patients called by him significantly the rat man said that he was able to he was able as a child to recognize everybody by their scent Another of Brill's patient was extremely sensitive to the odor of feces and could not use the bathroom until a hour after any other member of the family. Another patient was incommoded in the outside air by his sensitivity to odors. He interpreted them as poisons and would search out the paint shop or drugstore responsible. Eventually, this patient made a good adjustment. He became a perfumer. Calajerakis tells, tells of a boy who observed from the age of two to five. He could tell where his parents had been and whether they had made love by their smells. He distinguished the smells emanating from different parts of the bodies as sensitive masseurs do. The world ectohormone new pheromones was coined by the famous physiologist Beth apparently for his own experience from his own experience he could tell people apart by smell and whether they had exercised were emotionally excited whether they were menstruating or ill he could also distinguish the smells of other people on the person he was with at the time and thus could tell whom they had met that day he did not seem aware of these abilities that, the, that his abilities were exceptional and he offered them as an exception explanation of how ants and bees might communicate. Laird in 1935 obtained information from 254 distinguished people about their sense of smell. Eight of them proved remarkable in this area. One man knew when any particular person had been to the room, been in the room and could tell who they were by the odor of articles of clothing. A woman, doctor, age 60, could locate people by their smell and knew where her husband had been by the smell on his skin or clothing. Professional perfumers are, of course, prodigious, pro pro prodigious in this area. A paper quoted by Weiner describes a sense of isolation experienced by one should, such who could smell a world of subtlety undetected by his fellow creatures. This may parallel, par parallel the withdrawal stage of the older sensitive schizophrenic. Weiner himself asked a professional perfumer whether he could distinguish people's moods by their smell, and he replied without hesitation that he could, and seemed surprised that anybody had to inquire about this. It was so natural to him, so he was thinking, like, everybody could do this, but apparently, you know, it was something that he was pretty good at, and others knew nothing about it. I know a lay analyst who during interviews received quite complex cues from his clients that were like puffs of smell conveying different emotions and thoughts. There is the I am about to recall a dream smell. There is the whiff of panic that is nearly time to finish. There is a smell of accord over an insight and the ignore me gas of private disagreement. It is like thought reading, which in a successful case becomes mutual. External chemical messages are clearly an important element in intensely emotional communication, such as the transferences of analysis, the rapports of hypnotism, and the telepathy of lovers. But such signals are not the only way, not, but such signals are the only one of many involved in communication by the unconscious senses. Okay, so I'm trying to see if I'm going to even read all of this. I guess so. I just wanted to read a certain part of it. So I might just read a few more pages. Some perfumers can name the country from where the sam sample of lavender oil comes from and even the farm. This resembles the fate, the fates of winemanship when the connoisseur appears to be able to taste the countryside, even to taste the earth itself in the wine when he can tell what geological strata existed below the vineyard. The vineyard. Perfumers have been used to analyze and the complex spectrum of human sex hormones and also famous aura of schizophrenics. This is the curious atmosphere that a schizophrenic is alleged to carry about with him and by which 
experienced doctors often say they can diagnose the illness. The diagnosis may go thus. I suspect you are schizophrenic because I feel that you are. Medical doctors are taught to take special note of this feeling. Similarly, policemen are supposed to be able to smell crooks and vice versa. Rats can be trained to diagnose schizophrenics. An ex explanation for this aura might be that a person who are older sen persons who are older sensitive respond to other people's smells with an aware smell of their own. If the doctor, as a normal member of society, prefers to keep smell language at the subliminal level of feel or hunch, then he will reject outright this signal of unexpected awareness or forbidden language or forbidden knowledge and call the feeling mad. One must always remember what a powerful emotional feeling, emotional effect a smell can convey. This smell rejection might well lead to outbursts of anger or distress on the part of the madman whose uncomfortable awareness is amplified in the response to the reaction of the doctor. It is a common delusion among paranoid psychotics that a fearful smell emanates from their bodies. But the cause of this may be other people's fear escalating meaning that the the person who is schizophrenic is picking up on something that they can't see and they lash out at this and i will admit from working <clears throat> from actually working in a mental inst institution with certain people you can feel something with certain people but it could be it's because you recognize something about them that you can't see or you feel something that you can't see about this person and they can feel that and that's where that tension is coming from it's something that neither one of us can see and this is the part that they're not telling people. So it says the paranoid may feel that he is persecuted by the perceptual system. Blind people are seldom schizophrenic. They understand the dark, the dark senses. It is known that schizophrenic patients reflect by their own disturbances, hidden conflicts between hospital staff. The schizophrenic is aware of his own and other people's unconscious. He has an ability to sense unconscious impulses in the psychiatrist and an uncanny knack for nosing out hidden aspects of his personality. The aura is something is sometimes called the precox feeling. And it is considered that the patient who makes the doctor feel angry or sick is giving the doctor diagnostic diagnostic information. One experienced physician remarks as guidance to the other doctors, your own reaction to these signs and symptoms should be counted as equal part of the disease picture. If not puzzled or uneasy or even appalled, you are unlikely to be in the presence of catatonia. You should feel like a man standing before a half-trained tiger. The tiger tries to be good, but watch his eyes and the fibrillations rippling down the coat. In the hospital, a sociologist, after visiting a manic patient, became benevolent, gay, elated, and restless. He then met another manic. I had found him weary, but now I talked to him with eager. Now I talked to him eagerly and felt a great fellow feeling with him. His incredible rambling seemed to make more sense than before. The aura of groups taking LSD is said to make non-users high. There was an ancient belief that. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. I had to close my window. I don't want to rain to get in here. But anyways, where was I? So it says the aura of groups taking LSD is said to make non-users high. There is an ancient belief that the scent of the young and young had a rejuvenating effect on the old, which is probably why older people love to be around babies. Francis B. Bacon speculated that this was what kept teachers young. In the Bible, I think it's First Kings, a young man, young virgin is called in for King David, who after enjoying her body scent and, wait a minute, let me read that again. In the Bible, a young virgin is called in for King David, who after enjoying her body scent and breath was renewed. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> I just be feeling like I be reading between the lines. So it says a young virgin was called in for King David, who after enjoying her body scent and breath was renewed. 
And we all know based on history that a lot more than that probably happened to her because of their beliefs. I got some other books that tell you how they did some sick stuff because of their beliefs. So I'm, I'm almost willing to bet it went a little bit further than just smelling her body scent and her breath. But anyways, Emperor, em, Emperor Rudolph of Hadsburg called upon his noblemen to send their wives and daughters to cure his fever by kissing him. The practice is called Shunamism or Shunamism after the versions of Shun, Shunam whose exaltations, exaltations were said to prolong life. It is one of the sexual incretisms which advocate contact without orgasm like Carissa. Sometimes an analyst, an analyst has to defend himself. I'm going to have to make this a little bit bigger. Sometimes an analyst has to defend himself against charges of olfactory hallucination when it is his animal senses speaking to him. Thus, Grodek had a patient who smelled very bad to him, and his colleagues said that this was simply a hysterical conversion enabling Gredok to pick a hole in his patient. Angrily, he replied, angrily, he replied but taught by fools and by children, I have converted from the derision to a belief in psychic smell. I know, I know that with very, I know that with that very disturbance of his being, man produces a particular smell, produces it in a moment, and in a moment takes, in a moment makes it disappear. I know in spite of all learned teachings to the contrary that man is prim primarily a nose animal and that he only repress, represses his acute senses of smell during childhood before life because life would otherwise be unbearable. Meaning that you learn how to um, how to go smell blind, how not to pick up on a bunch of different smells because if you did and you reacted to all of those smells, life would be unbearable. Like you would literally go insane. And it's the same way with noises too, with sounds. So a lot of us have learned to turn off um, a lot of the noise pollution because if we didn't we otherwise go insane so you do not have to be mad to observe these things to associate these abilities with madness alone is to indicate how far we have outlawed them the dimensions of feeling tone that the unconscious senses including the olfactory senses add without our conscious knowledge add without our conscious knowledge to that we culturally suppose is a visual response are immeasurable. There is a famous and tragic case in most medical textbooks of the old man who had lost his senses except the sight of one eye. When that was closed, he slept like the dead. It appears that people who have lost their sense of smell die or become senile much quicker than people who retain extra sensuous, sensuousness. It is as though life loses interest for the non-osmic. Lewis Thomas points out how like the act of thinking smelling is and this is how it should be since the cells that do the smelling are themselves proper brain cells and the only ones whose fibers carry information firsthand from the outer world. Immediately at the very moment of perception you can feel the mind going to work setting off complex repertoires throughout the brain. Polling one center after another for signs of recognition, old memories, and connections. They are also the only brain cells that replicate themselves. There must be a wonderful antibiotic in the mucus bathing. This exposes surface. There must be a wonderful, there must be wonderful antibiotics in the mucus bathing. This exposed surface of the brain since it seldom becomes infected. Just as a blind, just as blind people are able by echo detection to distinguish an object that subsists an angle of only five degrees. So trained smellers can tell the direction of an odor source that subtends only seven to eight degrees despite the small distance between the nostrils. The schizophrenic aura is, the, is an intensification of the common experience of one's own space, including olfactory space, which can be invaded by others and is another human animal thing as American anthropologist Edward T. Hall shows us. He says that the schizophrenics are approached when the schizophrenics are approached too closely, the unfortunate people panic like animals in a zoo. And in describing how they feel, they say that anything that happens within their flight distance seems to take place inside themselves. Flight distance is how close an animal will let you approach before it flees. This is like Wordsworth's experience, the corresponsive breathe inside himself. 
corresponds to Breeze inside himself and <clears throat> Rilk feeling the path of a bird flying right through him. The larger animal requires more flight distance between themselves and others. The small animals less. The animal antelope will flee when the intruder is about 500 yards away, but the lizard, but the wall lizard, <clears throat> flight distance is roughly six feet. Some space species require contact and bundle together, like pigs, hedgehogs, and hippopotami, while horses and cat and hawks are like are non-contact species. Non-contact animals surround themselves with a kind of invisible bubble, as Hall calls it, known as the per known as personal distance. It is probable that this bubble contains more activity than is usually recognized. At the very least, many chemical messages. Okay, so let me see if I'm going to continue to read or if I'm going to stop there. What was that? 63. I'm just trying to make sure that they didn't mention anything. It was just that specific part that I honestly wanted to talk about. But the whole book is full of um, gems. So... Okay, I think I need to read. I think I need to keep reading. Okay. <clears throat> the, American, the American keeps a small bubble around himself, which he considers in, vi inviolate. Even in, public, even in a public place. Hall, waiting in a hotel lobby, was annoyed because somebody stood so close to him that his vision was crowded and he could also hear the man's breathing. Paul moved his body in a way that should have communicated annoyance, but this only encouraged the intruder, and he moved closer. When the la la latter's friend arrived, Hall understood that he was in an Arab. He was an Arab, and discussing the incident later with Arab friends, he found that the Arab public, for Arabs, public means public, and there is no concept of or opportunity for privacy in public space. For Arabs, the invisible bubble was meant to be broken and shared. All fact. All faction is important in Arab life and is a vital part of complex system of behavior. Arabs consistently breathe on people when they talk to the Arab. Good smells are pleasing and a way to be of being involved with each other. To smell one's friend is not only nice but desirable. For to deny him your breath is to act ashamed. By stressing off action, Arab do not try to eliminate all body odors, but to enhance them and use them in building human relationships. Here is a clear indication that the loss of the olfactory dimension in Oedipal European man, as described by Freud, is culturally determined. Arab American diplomacy, di diplomacy founders, Arab American dip dip diplomacy founders on this. Americans are trained not to breathe in each other's faces. Who would expect that this would communicate shame to the Arabs and not courtesy? The linguist Jew points out how the meaning of the word is changed by the heat and odor of an intimate utterance delivered by delivered in a whisper close to the skin of the ear. The whisperer avoids customary social meanings and reminds the addressee of meanings and feelings inside the skin. This is a characteristic of lovers' language and of magical language also. The postulant to the Osiric mysteries after the labyrinth, labyrinthine stumblings was left in the dark and a priest would rush towards him and say in a whisper into his ear the simple initi initiatory secret that must be felt as well as comprehended. Osiris is a dark god. As Massey says, the mysterious religions were instituted in order to protect the marvels of the commonplace from those who would devalue them. The multimedia or synesthetic capability needs to be useful and used if it is not to shake the sensitive to pieces. No doubt the Polowat canoeist with the ability to navigate great distances by the wave patterns fell through the seat of his pants was fundamentally be fragmented will be be fundamentally fragmented so to speak by the vibrations of our world meaning meaningless except in terms of commerce to use 
the use of human animal senses i swear i cannot read today the use of human animal senses synesthetically as multimedia is the rule and not the exception in other cultures how can an eskimo travel across across his apparently undifferentiated white territory it is by his sensitivities strange it is by his sensitivity strange to us not by the actual objects or points but relationships relationships between say contour types of snow wind saw air ice crack the direction of the wind and its smell and the actual complex texture of the ice beneath his feet will give the eskimos the information that enables him to travel hundreds of miles over visually indifferent indi indifferentiated waste Language is the sensitive mirror of anesthesia, synesthesia. Hall says that the Avalic Eskimos have at least 12 different terms for various winds. They integrate time and space as one thing and live in acoustic olfactory space rather than visual space. Even if they are not honored there, these multimedia events are a part of common experience. Concerning touch, for instance, which Blake calls the fifth window, the anthropologist Hall concurs. It is the most personal experience of all sensations for many people. Life, most intimate moments are associated with the changing textures of the skin, the hardening, armor-like resistance to the unwanted touch, or exciting, ever-changing textures of the skin during lovemaking, and the velvet quality of satisfaction afterwards are mes messages of one's body to another that have universal meanings, but it is not an event in the medium of touch alone. It is also an event in all the others. There is electrical changes as we all as we will see in there are thermal changes also as we have seen. Hall points out that the recent there are thermographic works indicate that the body's ability of the skin to detect and to emit radiant heat and infrared rays is very high that emotional states are reflected by the changes in the blood supply in different parts of the body and therefore human beings are well equipped to send and receive messages of emotion by these invisible means. As the texture changes, so does the IR emission and with the IR emission, the olfactory emission too. The Dyson theory says that the source of the smell sensation is the radiation of the molecules concerned. Another theory says that it is a lock and key mechanism with the olfactory nerve end chemicals and therefore is similar to the immune system. The amount of information that can be transmitted from inside the skin is a very good is very great indeed. What we might distinguish as a single sexual odor, as Weiner points out, may be composed of at least a hundred identifiable components, muscone and its an analogs, indoles, branch fatty acids, esters, steroids, and pyrimidines. Let's see here. Okay, I think this is the part that's going to get very technical. So I pretty much talked about what I wanted to talk about. It was mostly about the stuff with the schizophrenic stuff that blew me away. That is the part that I felt like was most important. Let me see if I can find anything else. Okay. I'm trying to make sure it's not. Because this to me, like, this is where the last chapter where I left off at. And it was like so informative that I just had to share it and I feel like anybody with um who may have been diagnosed with that condition needs to look more into it if it hasn't gotten to that point where they say like at some point it's like it um what did he say they literally start to like start to lose it after a certain point if there's no place for them in society for them to you know um learn this stuff and, and get a better understanding so let me see here I don't think I went back too far but anyways I'm going to see this person has some stuff whoever had this PDF got some stuff on her underline it says the black goddess is also the part of the mother we don't see but which haunts us all our lives yes I agree with that I agree. It's so much stuff in this book, though, that I really want to share. I'm just going to read this first paragraph. The Black Goddess is also that part of the mother who does, who we do not see that haunts us all our lives. This is the great pre oedipal Sphinx sitting on her mountain of spices. The riddle is literally under our noses. Yeah, 
it is okay let me see Oh yeah, I thought this part was pretty interesting too and it was talking about how children feel about their mother. So it says, to say it again, psychoanalysis tells us that the child fantasizes the mother's body is a great breaking open treasure house of all kinds of jewels and golden riches. The fantasy is truth. The treasures are the stored molecules and incredible, the incredible and knowing aromas of the mother's metabolism of love evoked by her, by her lover or by her by the, her enjoyment of herself or by the child's richness of perfume. The greatest art depicts these invisibles, the bounty of the goddess. Remembering it seems to Adrian Strokes painted the female nude as the sagging repository of jewels and dirt of fabulous babies and magical feces. So I thought that was pretty interesting too. It says how a child... Uh, how they feel about their mothers because I definitely can relate to that it was like um, I actually was telling my daughter this as a kid I could sense something about my mother like there was this wisdom that was there and I wanted um, for her to share that with me but I don't even know if she was like like she was aware that she had psychic abilities but I just felt like she was one of those people that didn't fit into society that people call crazy and she was from the south so in in the south this stuff might have been more you know acceptable in you know certain um areas or, or around certain people but you know in a city i don't know like you know we know a lot of people who live in the south who are um you know still connected to their roots uh, the voodoo um anything like that like shamanism and all that kind of stuff witchcraft and all that stuff they're still in tune with all those stuff they never stopped using they might have tried to um you know to conceal it to a certain extent so that they weren't persecuted for it but um for the most part i notice a lot of southern people still are like connected um to their roots so let me see before i get off of this if there is anything else that i wanted to share but that chapter right here alone was a wonderful chapter and i would sit and i read the whole chapter but it was just that specific part that I just like blew me away and I just felt like people need to know this like seriously because there are so many people out here that think like you know there's nothing that can be done and I actually had heard a lady speak about how she worked with somebody who had schizophrenia and her her perception of it or her interpretation of it was that it was multiple spirits attached to one person and in my head that made me think about how you know how people say don't everybody speak at once what well, that might be kind of what's going on with the schizophrenic person they may be more um susceptible or um sensitive to whatever spirits might be around them and they're all trying to communicate through this one person at a time and she said that she was able to help um i guess remove some of these spirits from the person so that they could go back to having a normal life and when I was taking my uh, course recently, uh, Holistic Health and Wellness, it was talking about how um, healthcare needs to become more culturally competent because the things that we label people with in the West here in the United States, um, or anywhere for that matter that that is doing this, anywhere in the country that is label, labeling people with these conditions, um, in other cultures, it's schizophrenia is not recognized as a mental health condition and i wish i can pull that up on here i don't know if i can pull it up on here on here i'll, I'll try to find it at a later date but it was it was um a, a part of uh my study materials where it was talking about how um schizophrenia is not recognized in um, all cultures and depending on the culture is dealt with differently and it is seen differently in many different cultures so even when people are diagnosed with and I'm not saying this to kind of make anybody like go against their doctors or anything like that but I know that there are people out here that just feel like this stuff doesn't make sense and they're just um I don't know too quick to diagnose people instead of understand or um realize that the healthcare field isn't 
uh, competent enough to deal with stuff like this. And like I was about to say, people with bipolar disorder, I look at that as like we all have so bipolar. So we all have two poles. That's you know. So that isn't that in itself is not enough to to diagnose somebody just to say somebody's bipolar well isn't everybody don't we all have two poles don't we all shift back and forth i guess it's about who can maintain the balance um and really we live in a world that doesn't allow us to maintain balance you're supposed to be outside of the home doing work well that's what they tell you and it, it may throw that balance off and you feel like it's something wrong with you because you don't want to do certain things anymore like one of the side of uh, one of the signs or symptoms of bipolar is losing interest in the things that you used to do well maybe you've outgrown those things maybe it's time for something new maybe your spirit is trying to communicate with you that i no longer want to do that that what worked for you before is not going to work now it's trying to tell you like i don't want to do that anymore no i'm ready for something new i'm ready for growth i'm ready for a challenge and that's the only way you can really grow on a spiritual level so the things that they label us, it really, like, so this is what I mean when I said that they're trying to, um, you know, control people. And I, I don't doubt that they know about this stuff. It's Because clearly somebody wrote a book about it. And this person said that he spoke with certain people and tried to ask certain questions. And, you know, people looked at him like, what? And with that being said, how many people have been diagnosed with conditions that wasn't never it was never a condition to begin with it was actually a gift but due to the fact that you didn't know how to use it you allowed somebody else to tell you that something was wrong with you and then you allow them to medicate you put you in a mental institution and you go along with it i've known people like i've listened and it i won't get into all the stuff but even the stuff that i've learned in school about psychiatric medications that shit should scare anybody away from that stuff like what and i hear people talk about this stuff all the time like how in the hell are the side effects worse than what i was dealing with before i came to you that just sounds like a desperate attempt to fix something that's not broken instead of taking the time to really you know grasp of what's going on. i just feel like maybe they can't comprehend it maybe it's just some stuff that they just don't understand and that's kind of you know going back to what i was saying about how people will go to the doctor or people are going to start going to the doctor and these doctors aren't going to have an answer for you and what will you do when you come to that point where the person that you put all your trust in because they wore a white coat and you thought they were your savior what are you gonna do when these people tell you i don't know what's wrong with you and there's nothing I can do for you. Um, I can't hold you. All your tests are coming back normal. I don't know what to tell you. What will you do when you get to that point? Because a lot of people have been trying to tell us about the herbs and stuff and about how to heal ourselves, but we didn't want to hear that. There's going to come a point where you're not going to have a doctor to turn to anymore. And all the people and all the... All, the things and the people that you thought were evil, that them, that's going to be the door y'all going to be knocking at, asking them, what do I do? Because the doctors told me, that, and, and, and they told me I'm about to die, and it ain't nothing that I can do about it. And they don't know what's going on with me. Because there are some things that doctors don't understand. Just because you went to school and you read a book, even me, I'm a nurse. And I went to school and I read all these books, and I just feel like, in, in reality... I mean, I don't really feel like I can use much of that to help with what I was, you know, what I've been sent here to help people with. And I, I feel like that's been one of my biggest issues because uh, what people fail to realize is just, just because you go to college don't make it no better than the high school or the elementary or the middle school that you went to. You're still being indoctrinated. This is why you can't go to school and get a degree and think that you're better than somebody. You literally just pay to be programmed and then you turn around and think you're better than somebody because you have their degrees now and you wear the their, their the clothes that they told you to wear this is something people need to start thinking about in the future because 
I don't know if y'all can feel it. And that's why this book is so important. I don't know how y'all can't feel what's happening right now. Like, how can y'all not feel what's going on? And I have another book that talks about how the people that, like, all they know how to do is pray. That praying is not going to save y'all in the end. That stuff that they told y'all was evil, that y'all have learned to be fearful of, that y'all shun, that y'all... Uh, um, talk shit about on a regular basis that the, that the stuff that y'all are so concerned about y'all gonna come to realize in the future that everything is not what it is perceived to be and it's gonna get crazy out here I've been seeing people talking about uh, um, I don't know it could be a distraction but they talking about how people been seeing shapeshifters what would you do if you came to realize that everything that you thought was real was a fucking lie the whole time to keep you a slave to this shit. To keep you sleep. I bet a lot of people don't even realize all this zombie stuff. Pay attention. All these zombie Who do you think they're talking about? They talking about most of y'all. Y'all are zombies walking around dead. When I went through my spiritual awakening. Um... In that moment, and I was literally in my room, same spot I'm at now, I felt like somebody had um, woke me up as if I had been asleep my whole damn life. And then all of a sudden, somebody shook me awake. And when they did that, I was able to see the unseen. This is what I'm talking about. Once I came to... I was never able to go back to the way that I was because now it was like these, I think Dick Gregory talked about this too before he passed and he said that once you put these glasses on, you can't take them back off. You are stuck in that. You can't go, you can't go back to that. You can try to, but it's going to be hell and it's going to be even worse. Every time you keep trying to go back into that system or keep trying to go back to sleep. It's gonna, things are gonna get worse for you until you have no choice. I think it even said that it, uh, something about this book, about doing this work and not doing this work or starting it and not finish it, finishing it is worse than never had it start, having started from the beginning. Now, it might seem like it's easier for people who just sleep or who don't, you know, who are not aware of what's going on in the world, but when the shit hit the fan, they gonna be the ones that's gonna be going crazy because they haven't been um they just weren't aware they just aren't aware of what's going on and you know they've been distracted their whole life and you know I can say that I'm actually grateful because at one point I was just like everybody else I was just like you know what's going on asking all these questions and you know it wasn't easy accepting the truth. It's almost like um, the stages of grief, almost. You know, at first it's denial. You in denial. You can't believe, like, ain't no way in hell all this stuff is going on. This got to be a lie. No, this stuff can't be real. It's literally like if you go looking at look at the, the you know, you should call it the, the stages of, of, of awakening or consciousness because it's literally like the same thing. You feel like you're dying. You know, um, something else that's worth looking into is soul walk-ins. Soul walk-ins. And I feel like that's what's been happening to a lot of people. Um, I won't even say it's like a walk-in. I feel like something is awakening within people. Something is awakening within people. And um, I really feel like that's why they was trying to get everybody with that jab. Because they were trying to stop that awakening process. And they told y'all, but... You know, they kind of told everybody to a certain extent what they were trying to do. But if you don't know what they're talking about, if you don't know the lingo, then you think that you're doing something that's actually beneficial to you when you're actually harming yourself. So it's very important to start being aware. Let me see if it's in. I'm going to just kind of skim through this a little bit. But I just kind of wanted to do like a, um, a quick little review over the part that I have read. So I'm just going to kind of skim through it a little bit. 
and see if there's anything interesting. Whoever had this book, like I said, already started to highlight stuff. So I just wanted to. Why is it not letting me jump pages? Let's see here. Is there anything else? Did the, introduc the introduction itself was pretty damn good, too. Okay. And the, the thing with the weather, I think they refer to that now. They want to, this is the thing. Now they talk about it. It's called SAD. Seasonal effect, Affective Depression. Something like that. I think that's what it is. Whatever it is, it's caused by the weather. And um, I've dealt with that since I was a kid. If the sun is not out, if the sun is not shining, it literally has an effect on me. And I have to do extra shit for energy, it seems like. Like, you know, yeah, I'm talking about like on a real gloomy day. Like where it's just dark and it's just, yeah. it. My body like is, you know. And he says something in here about being in communion with the elements. Um they are represent they, he refers to them as invisibles in how some people are you know um when they withdraw or when they respond a certain type of way because of the weather they're actually in communion with nature let's see here the one fallen daughter so let's see i'm just want to go back we're gonna look at the um table of contents so this is the contents it's introduction filling the invisibles the perfume sphinx man it's some stuff about the sphinx that people need to really look into and i've heard several people say this that that sphinx is not a man that is a woman and that sphinx is directly connected to segment so i don't know if that uh you know that bothers anybody but i kind of figured that anyways it it to me it kind of looked like a woman anyways i always thought it was a woman it's just, just like i said with the religion stuff like sometimes you gotta go with your gut and you feel like you write about something and you just feel like yeah, this don't seem right don't don't ignore that stop doing that that's gonna make your ass go crazy stop doing that learn to trust yourself and trust what your mind and your body is trying to tell you and your spirit is trying to tell you your body is the one that's in the way your mind can get in the way too, but your spirit, your spirit ain't gonna let you down. And that's the part that they teach us to um, disconnect from and trust somebody else to lead it in religion. I actually wanna read some, I might read the stuff from this book right quick. I might actually, I'm gonna just, I might just do a separate video because I don't want this video to too long, but I wanna do a, a video on religion and reincarnation. So y'all can really realize like, this is this is this shit is a game and they've been trying to tr keep you trapped in this game because they need you they can't play the game without you i had seen um a post a, a long time ago on facebook somebody posted they said all you got to do is stand up you the legs to the table they got you on your hands and knees they got a table on your back all you have to do is stand up and say game over i don't want to play this game no more i'm not doing this anymore and i bet you they'll start to switch some shit and even if they don't it's 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 bigger than um it, it it's beyond all this stuff with this back and forth stuff with these people on this planet and um i think we really need to start tapping into that and stop focusing on so much and i'm not saying that we shouldn't want things to be better but man when you've learned some of the stuff that i've learned you just feel like all that shit is a waste of time so um the perfume sphinx the fallen daughter we definitely need to uh, read that part because of um, religion. The extra extra sensuous perception, blind sight and the black rainbow, the osmotic fountain, the intelligence of his air, total dowsing, visual at land's end, and Mary Lucifer. I bet that's a good one too. I'm getting ready to get into that one um, real soon. And then I'll, I'll probably just... I might come back and do a, um, a review on each section 
<clears throat> versus try to read the book all the way through because it is time consuming because I also I like to look up stuff when I'm reading books too not just to sit down and read them but if it's something I don't understand I don't want to wait until I finish a lot of times I like to go ahead and look it up so I can get an understanding while I'm reading it but anyways Mary Lucifer the color of the Holy Spirit the great whore the black goddess love streams the black snake mere deviltry lucid frenzy blackness visible for the egyptian darkness research something a lot of people need to do the once and future gnosis and that's it i thought i was gonna literally read through this book like in a couple days and i was sadly mistaken because it's too deep some books i can actually read through like that like it's like sometimes when my spirit leads me to certain books and it's it's not not may, might not be as long as this book, but I can literally sit and read through certain books like nonstop from from cover to cover. But this book is very technical, but it's a, a really good book, especially for women and men too. But for women, I really feel like this um, is a missing link for us. But I'm trying to see if I want to read anything else or do I just want to do a completely separate video. I might just do a separate video. There's another book that I feel like every woman should have. And there's another woman who is also reading from this book by the name of uh, her name is Cassandra Faye Floyd. And um, I was able to luckily catch her when she was reading The Great Cosmic Mother, a book that I had here for a while. And I kind of had um, I was skimming through it. I didn't read it cover to cover, but um, she was wonderful um, enough to read it on her page and I was able to catch her that is another book that all women should get I think I might actually have that in PDF form too but I'm I'm not reading these these books are long I, I can do a review if anybody is interested in any of these books and uh, certain parts that you would like me to read but I doubt that I am going to sit and read the entire book who knows though in the future I might change my mind but I am going to do a separate video on religion and reincarnation but anyways, I think that is where I'm going to end this video. I just wanted to, again, share that important information with you all. I hope that that helps somebody or maybe you know somebody who has been diagnosed with this condition. I'm not saying to um, try to convince them of anything. I'm just saying like they, people need to know about this stuff. This is part of um, healing thyself. But anyways, um, Thank you for all who took the time to watch this video, and I will try to post my next video. I may do it tonight, and I, or I might just wait till in the morning. But anyways, have a blessed day, and good night.